Shumai, welcome. Today on BTC IoT, we're going to be developing and making a tiny little uh, Bitcoin price display. Um, so this uses, in the last tutorial, uses a, the ESP32, um, uh, and we've added a, an extra module to it, which is a tiny little e-paper module, and then we're powering it with this tiny little LiPo battery. So the whole project costs like between 15 and 20 dollars, um, and it just goes and fetches the camera here it just goes and fetches the price um, every hour and then goes to sleep I've uh, for demonstration purposes so you can see it refreshing I'm having it check the price every every 10 seconds or so um, and then it will refresh so it may or may not change now if you wait a moment um, but it's using again pretty cheap components um, uh, this e-paper display is is that going to change? I think maybe the maybe the pence changed. I've obviously got it in GBP, which is um, my local currency, but you could change it to any uh, any currency you, you you want to change it to. We're using um, Open Node. Open Node is fantastic. It's a great service, and uh, you have to give them props for what they said to Roger Ver. I wish I'll, I'll get up on the computer in a, in a moment. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a neat little device which you could uh, because in between. Um, the wonderful thing about e-paper is it doesn't use any power um, once it's refreshed. So essentially when this wakes up every hour, it just connects to the Wi-Fi and goes and fetches the price, displays it on the e-paper, and then it goes back to sleep for another hour or three hours or six hours, whatever you set it to. And while it's asleep, the power consumption is absolutely minimal. It's 0.04 milliamps per hour. Um, and that, I mean, this little FIPO battery here is probably one of the, the worst, cheapest ones you can get. That's a 500 milliamp hour battery. So this would last for many, 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 many days, uh, weeks, months on this little tiny battery. Um, and uh, because it's, you know, obviously quite small, you could put it inside a little box or something or put it somewhere where you're going to see it every day or, um, yeah. So we're just going to dive right in and we're going to start coding up first. Uh, it's probably worth me showing you the price of some of these components. So um, I've already gone and got them up. So the actual e-paper module here, which I bought from Ali, Ali uh, Express, there we are, you can see it's like $12 per module. Um, some of them have uh, colors. I went for the cheapest one, which is the black and white one, because I don't particularly need color. You could if you wanted to get a color one, but um, uh, it's entirely up to you. Uh, the other thing which you are using is this ESP32 which just in case you haven't seen the last tutorial, you really should see the last tutorial, but if you haven't seen the last tutorial, it's just a very, very small uh, microcontroller, which has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth capability, and it's got a whole bunch of GPIOs, general purpose input output pins, which we can connect devices to and connect things to buttons, batteries, and so on. Uh, the wonderful thing about, um, uh, about the, the, the microcontroller is that it has the ability uh, to do SPI communication, uh, which is the, the communication protocol for it to be able to connect to other modules like little display modules and things. So uh, as a sort of base microcontroller, you can really um, break out and, and, and use lots of different types of little little modules. The, uh, uh, if we switch back to screen capture, the, there's a little, the little battery. I mean, there's one here for like, you know, $2.30 and that's a, that's an 800 milliamp uh, uh, battery. It's 3.7 volts, which is nice. So um, you can plug it into uh, the the 3.3 volt pin uh, on the, you can actually see it there on the photo, just, just there. And the ground's next to it. So we can just literally just plug it straight into the GPIOs, which is pretty good. Um, the, 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 GPIOs themselves, uh, when you buy your uh, ESP32, um, they come in all different shapes and sizes. I, I would recommend this one, but I mean, if you go get a different one, you can get some with little LED displays built in and all sorts of things. Um, but what, when you do get your uh, ESP32, if you just Google the name, um, like this one, the one I've got is called the Dev Kit, Dev Kit version one. So I Googled ESP32 Dev Kit version one GPIO. And then uh, there's a breakdown then of what all the pins do and what you can do with those pins. Um, and the, the ones in green here, these are actually the pins which we're gonna be using for the SPI uh, communication to the, the little e-paper display. Uh, yeah, so the reason we're using uh, Open Node, I don't know if you're aware of Open Node, but I mean, that it's an excellent, um, it's kind of a concatenation service. So if you want to engage with um, uh, the Lightning Network um, on Bitcoin, but 
you aren't quite up to the task of running your own node or um, you're out of bound, maybe you can't run your own node, then you can uh, use this, they use their API to receive lightning payments from people um, and then you can get open node to concatenate those lightning payments out to a Bitcoin um, uh, mainnet address. So you could have a hardware wallet and then every time you build up, I don't know, 20, 50, 100 quid on here, then you could just get it to output to the mainnet wallet. So it's a really easy way. I mean, I know you're obviously trusting a third party, but the security risk is minimal. It's for a small amount of money. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think the trade-off is fine just for you know easy onboarding of people and people being able to experiment and play with with the Lightning Network. And then it's very easy then if you, you run your own node to be able to you know use BTC Pay or something um, uh, to um, uh, and then switch switch across to, to managing your own payments on your own node. But it's a fantastic service. It's uh, if you you know I'm not logging. If you um, if you sign up, it's it's they, all they require is, a, is an email and a, a, a password to sign up. Um, and uh, and then once you're you're actually into Open Node itself, it has. Um, I'll put a link for Open Node in the description, so you can you can click on that um, and sign up. Uh, once you sign up yourself, you have a dashboard, and then um, you've got you know useful things. So you've got the well, I'm not going to show you my keys, but you've got some settings here. You've got a really well uh, documented um, uh, API, so it's very easy to just flick through and if we scroll down. Uh, let's have a look what we've got. Um, you can create like a, a lightning charge. Um, uh, so you could have a website which just uses uh, open node to collect lightning payments. In fact, they've got um, an excellent WordPress uh, plugin which, which you can use, um, uh, which I'm actually gonna be using on a, a shop I'm setting up selling some of the stuff we've been making. Um, so yeah, no, really, really very good. Sign up for a, an account at open node. Uh, the actual, um, module we're going to be making this uses open node to check the price so open node source um, uh, the bitcoin price from uh, lots of different sources and then kind of average it out and give you a nice uh, give you a nice average price and i found that the 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 um, price has been has been pretty spot on um, so i have to say respect to that one okay um uh, yeah, so so I suppose we're just going to sort of dive in and start 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 coding the CSP32 up. So um, in the last tutorial, I explained about once you've set up um, your Arduino IDE and how that you have to uh, install the ESP32 uh, board into the Arduino IDE. Um, if you want, you can use a, a different text editor and then just import into an Arduino IDE, but I, I think it's, it's fine using the IDE. I know it's sometimes frowned upon among proper developers, but hey, we're not proper developers, so it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, yeah, as, as I explained in the last video, when you open the Arduino IDE, there's a sort of setup uh, function and a, a loop function which will loop around. Uh, we're obviously going to be using the loop function to, to collect the, pay, to collect the um, payment sorry, not the payment information, to collect the price information and then display it on our e-paper. Um, the first thing we're going to do, though, is we're, we're, we're not going to worry about the e-paper for now. We're just going to get our, um, e our ESP32 to connect to open node, get the price in your currency. For this example, maybe I'll change it to USD. Um, get the price in your currency and then... Um, display in the serial monitor uh, for the ESP32, but not display it on the, on the e-paper, okay? Um, I'm not gonna type it up, because it's a little bit more code, so I'm gonna kind of just import it into chunks and then explain as we, as we build the, the program um, using those, those chunks. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import uh, a header, um, some header information into our, into our file. So, what have we got? We've got um, a Wi-Fi library, which we're going to use just to connect to our, our Wi-Fi at home. Um, and then we've got Wi-Fi client secure. And this is the, um, the, the client get software we're going to use to be able to connect to the OpenNode API. The OpenNode API is over SSL. It's a secure connection, so we need to use this library. Um, so here you just input your uh, SSID information and password. Um, we've got a, 
as, as, as before, except we're not connecting to Telegram, we're connecting to OpenNode. So in the last tutorial, we connected to Telegram, we used the exact same code, but in this one, we're just connecting to um, OpenNode. Um, we're using port 443, because that's the standard SSL uh, port. Um, I'll change this from BTC GBP to USD, because um, in this example, we're going to get the price in USD, just, um, just to show that we can, I suppose. Uh, we've also got an additional string, which is the, 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 the price string. So once we've on, actually gone and collected the price from open node, we're going to, at the moment that string's empty, um, we're going to go collect the price from open node and then we're going to stick it inside that string so we can output it onto, onto our e-paper eventually. Okay, cool. So that's the, that's the, um, the end for the sort of header area. So the next thing that we're, we're going to do is we're just going to import a little bit of code uh, into our setup function um, and this is just to connect to uh, the Wi-Fi so it goes and fetches our Wi-Fi credentials we put up here and it um, uh, it, it begins the Wi-Fi connects to the Wi-Fi and then it does a little loop saying while Wi-Fi status not to connected uh, serial print connecting so on our little serial monitor we can use for debugging, it'll say connecting, 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 does every half second. And then once it's connected, it prints out connected. Okay. Um, after that, we're going to uh, actually activate the, uh, the Wi-Fi um, client. So we're going to use the library Wi-Fi client secure, we're going to set up a new client. And then we're going to use that host information, which was uh, the OpenNode API up here. And we're also going to use this uh, HTTP HTTPS port um, and we're going to use that to connect to uh, OpenNode. Okay, once we've connected to OpenNode um, we're going to do a get request. So here's our get request. I hope this sort of makes sense. I'm kind of experimenting with different ways of, 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 of doing these tutorials. The first one I kind of wrote out all the code and it took a long time. This one I'm just kind of bringing into chunks and see if that kind of works. So I'll keep experimenting. Maybe it'll be different depending on the tutorial, but this one's got quite a lot of code in. So. Um, so we did, in the last tutorial, we did pretty much the same kind of get request, the exact same get request. Um, uh, but obviously it was just to a, different, uh, to, a different, to a different server. Now, we're actually going to see if we can, yes, we can... Uh, um, this is the, these are the sort of the perimeter at the end of the, the API uh, URL. Um, and we're going to just now hit that. So if I type in uh, HTTPS uh, uh, API.OpenNode.co, here we are. Cool. So that just opens a JSON file. Um, which has uh, like look at all these look at all these different currencies which you could go and go fetch the price for so yeah so that's the, that's not really an issue so GBP um, uh, is here and uh, yeah so GBP is here so we're going to be going for BTC USD which is there isn't it okay um, yeah the price we didn't it's not really worth looking at the price I really like OpenNode I think they're a cool company and I honestly thought that their their reaction to Rogers um, Roger Ver made uh, a proposition to them. I think he could see that they're a really promising company and that they're doing some interesting stuff. Um, so I actually got the article up here. Um, uh, so OpenNode turned down a $1.25 million fund offer um, from, from, from Roger Ver. And the quote, which was absolutely outstanding, uh, so no amount of money will make us service inferior money uh, by, by um, by OpenNode there, which I thought was I thought was great. So well done, and props to OpenNode. They deserve our respect, and they deserve for us to experiment and play with their service. I know a lot of people are really fixated on people running their own nodes, and that's absolutely fine. It's brilliant. You know, take ownership over your own money. But how many people run their, run their own email servers? How many people run their own web servers? Like some stuff, people outsource. And uh, when it comes to Bitcoin m m main chain, then yeah, have your own node and and and. Ideally, run your own Lightning node just to sort of help the, the network um, and experiment with it. 
But there is nothing wrong in engaging with the network through some sort of custodian concatenation service like this. And I'm sure, I mean, you've also got another great service, um, which I should give a, a, a shout out to, is Async Strike. Uh, um, and they're, they're again, they're, they're very similar to OpenNode. They've got kind of the same business um, model. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's Lightning Strike, here we are. Um, I'm preparing to strike. Oh, this looks pretty nice. No, that's not it. That's uh, that's uh, that's something else. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to find it now, aren't I? Right. So it's by Async, the people who make the Eclair wallet. Here we go. Strike by Async. Here we go. Fantastic. They've got a nice little animation here, which kind of explains the process. So you receive lots of little lightning payments. That goes into Strike, it builds up, and then it spits out into your Bitcoin wallet. OpenNode also do straight to bank as well. If you really want straight to bank. Um, Strike's fantastic, uh, um, so we've already got two services doing this, I'm sure we'll get many more services, so that kind of, you know, that's, 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 that's an, another good thing for that, for that industry. Uh, yeah, so, where was I? I kind of got carried away with, with, with that. Okay, so, oh yeah, we, we hit the, 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 the JSON to see, yeah, yeah. So that's basically what this get request is doing, is it's hitting that JSON, um, file, um, at version one rates. Um, and then it's we need to we need to read the JSON file, don't we? We need to read what what it comes back with, yeah. Um, so uh, we take if I kind of I'll bring this into two chunks. So we've got here. This is just where we lock up what comes back in this string here called line, um, uh, and we've missed a library from oh, right there. yes. Um, you're going to have to sort of backtrack a little bit. We missed a library from the top here, so we're going to be using a new library. This is a fantastic library called um, Arduino JSON. So this is specifically a library uh, in Arduino just for passing JSON data, which you get um, um, from API calls and so on, and also making JSON data. But it's a, a really, uh, it amazes me how much people create um, uh, uh, some of the, the, the momentum of some of these open source projects, it really does. And the amount of time and effort people put into supporting um, uh, supporting their projects is, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, so uh, the Arduino JSON is uh, the GitHub, it's all open source, free and open source, um, and that is specifically for passing JSON data. So we're going to be using that in our in our script today. Um, so once we go and get that the the JSON data, we've then got to pass through it and actually get out the the um, uh, the the price data, don't we? So I'm going to copy this and then just kind of explain how I went and got um, how we how I made up this this bit of code here. So it looks quite intimidating, but it's not. So we need to like kind of make a memory um, uh, buffer for uh, the JSON information which we're, which we're fetching, which is kind of what this thing does here. And then, so there's our line string there, okay? So we're telling it it's JSON, it's a JSON object. We pass through it, uh, we lock that what, the pass data up in root, and then we're able to kind of target the different parts of that JSON data. So if I go, where am I? I think it's here, isn't it? If I go here, API, not Telegram, I have to open up again, sorry. Open node rates, here we go. Um, Firefox is pretty neat. It just kind of like automatically uh, makes it, you know, nice to look at. So a bit easier on the eye, um, that JSON data. Uh, so we can see here we've got data, which is there. So the, the root is just basically the whole JSON block. And then we're targeting on data, which is that um, part of the tree. And then once we've uh, locked up data there, we're then um, focusing in uh, on BTC GBP. So you see what it says on currency there? That is on currency. That's our string just here, isn't it? Now I've changed that to BCD USD, so it'd be interesting to see if that will go and fetch that. So it's going data, and then it's looking through data and it's going, okay, BTC USD is this one here. Yeah? And then. We're, uh, we're, we're taking BCD, BTC OSD and we're making a substring where we take the last third characters of the substring. So well, that would be USD, wouldn't it? So it's going data, BTC USD, USD, boom, and there's the price. 
So that should, I guess, totally work. And then we're serial printing that out. So let's test what we've got so far. I've uh, taken out all the little wires out of the uh, ESP32, and you can actually see that, you know, without any power or anything, that it's still maintaining the 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 uh, the last uh, refresh um, on the e-paper display. So that is why they're so incredibly low power because right now, you know, that's there's no power going to that that um, that module, and it's because it's because ink which has just been brought to the surface of the of the uh, screen. Um, it doesn't need any power, so it's not taking any power now, okay? Obviously, because it's not plugged in. So I've just got the bare bones ESP32 here, and now I'm going to upload the file we've just created. Okay, cool. So I've just got the ESP32 here, plugged it in, and we're going to upload our project um, to it. Now, when you're um, uh, uploading... Oh, wait, let's open the serial monitor. There's a serial monitor. Have I got, yeah, I've got, there we are, I've got serial begin, so that's, that, that's, I didn't explain that, but that's, that's in our code to, to um, send data to the serial monitor so we can do debugging. So you'll notice now that the program's not actually uh, uh, uploading, but it's waiting um, for the device. So on the SP32, the one I've got, you need to click on the little boot thing here. Um, ooh, there we are. Um, and then once you click on that little boot thing, it will uh, it will upload. Uh, there we are. So it's uploaded. Connecting, 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 connected. Hey, look at that! Wow, that's cool. Three thousand four hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Oh, <laughs> this bear market. Eh? Um, uh, so yeah, so there we are. So it did exactly what we wanted to do. The ESP thirty-two. It went and it. Um, uh, connected to the uh, um, open node API and it went and fetched the, the price um, so it's amazing this little tiny micro um, controller here this tiny little chip in here connected to my router which is all the way downstairs and then went across, you know went and fetched that data from open node and then just sent it out through the USB cable to the to the monitor so we could um, uh, to the, the serial monitor uh, so now we're just going to connect the ESP32 uh, to the e-paper module um, uh, yeah, using the SPI communication protocol. So you could, if you want, um, on your ESP32, you could use a different uh, screen. I personally uh, really like these e-paper modules because they're incredibly low power. Um, and I, I just like e-paper in general. I just like the way it kind of looks. I think it looks cool. Um, and it's, uh, it's a nice high resolution uh, display, actually, which is, is good at um, displaying things like QR codes and stuff. So. Uh, original, I mean, so this little e-paper module here, which you'll see, this has got a QR code on. This is from a company called WaveShare, and this is kind of like a more official um, uh, Arduino um, e-paper module, 1.54 inch e-paper module. Um, and it's, but it's more expensive. It's like you know, twenty twenty dollars or something, or, or twenty quid. Um, whereas this one is kind of it's, it's slightly larger, and it's the, the, you can tell actually the quality of the the. The print on the display is not quite as good, but I mean, this is like you know, as we saw, it's like ten dollars, so it's, it's half the price. Um, so that's why I've been using this one. This is the first project I've used this thing on, but I've actually been really impressed uh, uh, on it for the price. So I got all these wires sticking out the back, and you'll see there that these wires have um, here we go, uh, they're named. Okay, um, so they all do different functions. So we've obviously so VCC and GND. That's that's just the power. So it's the live wire there, which is three point. 3.7 volts and the the ground wire um, there's uh, the uh, um, uh, busy wire here which just basically like sends a uh, it tells the sp32 that this is busy doing something and there's a, a reset um, switch which kind of resets the module there's DC which is uh, data connect um, wire CS chip select so um, technically on your sp32 you could have um, well, I suppose you're limited by the amount of GPIOs, but you could have lots of different modules connected to your SP32. So you could have like a keypad and knee paper module and a little OLED display and maybe like some um, uh, some sort of sensor or something. And each time you use one of those modules, you need to select that module because obviously you don't want to send you know the the um, the, the data to the OLED display, uh, which is actually meant for the paper module. So that's chip select. So that just so it says, right, I'm selecting the e-paper module. 
Um, there's SL, uh, SCLK, which is the, the clock, so that kind of sends the, the, the beat, the pulse for the, for the, for the data to get um, uh, sent. Um, SPI can be really annoying because these, these uh, different connections here can have lots of different names and can be named under different things. So that's something which you'll have to Google if your ePaper module is, is different. Anyway. So we're going to connect on our little uh, ESP32 here. It's actually got all the, you see all the numbers of the GPIOs here. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to connect the live wire to the three volt wire. Then we're going to connect the, the black wire, so the ground wire. We're going to connect that to the, um, the ground on there. So the, this ESP32 has two ground connections, um, uh, which is useful. That's why I can use a, uh, an external battery with it. Still not focusing in there, are we? It's a bit annoying. I mean, I'll just have to live with it. Um, so the what have we got next? Let's go from this side. So we've got the purple wire here. The purple wire is going to be going to GPIO4. And the purple wire is the busy wire. So GPIO4. The white wire is going to go to the reset, which is GPIO. 21 GPIO 21 the what we got next green the green wire is going to go to the um, data connect data connect or data command um, and that is 22 um, so I'm using the uh, I think I'm I think I'm using the the actual recommended SPI GPIOs, but technically you can use um, uh, pretty much any of the GPIOs on the on the board. Uh, so we're gonna, this, this is the, the chip select, which goes to chip, uh, GPIO 5. And then we have the yellow, and the yellow is the clock, and that's gonna go to GPIO 18, which is, GPIO 18, where are you? There you are. I haven't got the best eyes for this. There you go. And what have we got left? I've oh, got the blue wire. So the uh, blue wire, which is the SDL, is going to go to 23. There we are. Cool. So that's all wired up. I'll plug him in as well. and plug him in. Um, you'll see on the, the GPIOs there, you've got this side, this is the, 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 the little three volt um, uh, uh, output to which we're outputting to our module. Um, and then on the other side, should focus, there we are. So you've got three volt on that side. On the other side, we've got one called VIN and GND. So that is a five volt. Um, it can be an input or an output. If you plug a battery into it, um, this will actually run off three AAA batteries. We've got a little AAA, three AAA battery module. Uh, and then just uh, um, just plug it into those two GPIs there, the, the VIN and the, the GND. Um, but I'm using the little LiPo battery. But that will also that can also power another device if, if needs be. And you can also just do a sort of parallel circuit if you want from this this three volt. That will be it should be fine. So we've we've got our, our header area here. Um, there is some sort of additional stuff we're going to add here. Now the library we're going to be using um, is called GX. Um, uh, GX EPD2, which is uh, a library specifically for e-paper displays. Again, you know, I'm, I'm amazed at the amount of uh, time and, and, and energy people pump into these free and open source projects. It's fantastic. So here we are. So this is um, again, it's on a you know they have a GitHub. It's for all free and open source. GX EPD2, um, and uh, yeah, that's the that's going to be the, the 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 library we're going to use to connect to our e-paper. Um, right. So. We, uh, what do we need to do? We need to identify our, so we bring in the library. Um, we have, uh, we're gonna be using uh, a font, obviously, to, um, to, to print out the, the, um, the amount onto the e-paper display. And then, um, let's just put this here. We're gonna have sort of connection, the SPI connection uh, details, we're gonna add that, okay? And also, tells the library what, what kind of board it is, um, because obviously lots of different types of boards. Um, now, there's a big chunk of code which I'm gonna be bringing in. 
the um, if I maybe it's probably a good idea for me to switch this for a second. So on the actual e paper here, you'll see that this this b uh, the Bitcoin B and where it says price here. This is actually um, a graphic. That's a that's a bitmap. Um, and then under it is, is text which is being sent to the e-paper. So we, we have to put this bitmap um, uh, data into, into our file. So I've already made the bitmap for that. And if you want to sort of change that bitmap, there are um, resources online for you to be able to sort of learn how to do that. So that's something you just have to kind of look into yourself. So you'll see now this is a big file. Boom, look at that, look at that script. So these are hex values. Um, and then it just kind of like, uh, so each one of these is uh, four pixels, four pixels, no, each one of these is eight pixels, I think, and then it just draws it from left to right, and then all the way down the paper, that it draws, it draws the image. Um, you, if you plan on doing some experimentation, which you probably will actually, I suppose, if you get an e-paper display, um, there is a, if I can find it, there is a really good resource, which is very, I find incredibly useful. Um, here we go, here it is. And uh, again, it's just a GitHub project. And in it, you can import a picture and then turn it into this you know, specific type of BMP byte array, uh, which is this thing here. So it'll turn it into these hex values for you. Um, so that's called um, image, to, image to CCP. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's totally worth having a look at if you want to, if you want to do that. Um, right, so that, so that will draw the, the Bitcoin B and then where it says price and that kind of like cool back to the future font. We're going to here, we're going to, there we are, we turn on our display, we set the rotation for the display to display the text the certain way around we want to display it. Um, oops. Uh, and then we use this font here, so there's a font library kind of included in JXEPD. We set the text color to black, obviously it's a black screen. Um, we're going to make a new function and we're going to put all this data inside that function, the, um, uh, the uh, SSL request to the open node API. Um, this here is kind of like the layout which is, is expected by the library for um, the bitmap, uh, the, the, the request to send data to the e-paper, okay, with this first page to the next page. I find it really confusing, but that's the way it wants you to lay it out. So the first thing we do is we flash the screen white to get rid of any previous data which may be on the screen. Um, the next thing we do is we, um, we draw our bitmap. So um, we go 50 pixels down the page, down the e-paper display. And then we draw the bitmap, um, which is called logo, which is obviously this bitmap up here, isn't it? As you can see, it's called logo. Um, and then uh, the logo is 200. So, so you have to be really specific with when you're drawing these bitmaps. You have to make sure that the width and the, the height is exactly right. Obviously, it just won't work. It'll look all squiff. Um, uh, uh, there we are. It's going to be in. It's going to be in in black. And then, because we're now down 100 pixels because we went 50 pixels from the top, and it's a 50 pixel or 42 pixel um, high image. Um, we then set the cursor to 120 pixels down before we print out our actual price here. Now, we've changed it, haven't we, to, um, to USD. So, yeah, um, there we are. And we're gonna take all this data here, uh, our actual request to, Open node, and we're going so we're going to make a new function, and we're going to call it on price, which you can see up here. So when it runs down through the setup, it's going to call this function. Um, uh, we're going to do the void thing. So void on price. That's our new function, and that's actually going to be our function which we do our API request in. I'm trying to be a little bit neater with my code. I suppose I didn't need to make a function, but um, I'm trying to be a little bit neater with it. Um, yeah, I'm new to all of this stuff, so you know I'm not the, the best teacher really, but I mean, yeah, I've, I've managed to stumble through and make these things, so it's pretty cool. Um, so that's on price there. So, okay, so there's our function down there. We call the function, um, and then we go and get the price, which is this thing here, which we lock up in our string called price, which is at the top here so we put the price into that little string and then where are we and then um, uh, we then send that to the e-paper display um, and it's in usd this time isn't it 
Um, I'm going to put my Wi-Fi credentials in there. So I'm going to switch this camera again while I do that. Right, so we're uploading now. Get ready to switch cameras. Well, there we are, cool. So I gotta press the little button to get it to... Oh, let me press the one more. There's two little buttons, I don't know what the other one does. And... Okay, so it's uploading. See here, right? So connect, trying to connect to the Wi-Fi. Connect to the Wi-Fi. I'm going to switch to this one. Boom! Ah, there we are. Look at that. Cool. And it's in USD as well. Nice. Just to show that we can do it in USD. That's marvelous. So um, to change the to change the currency, actually, it's pretty simple. Um, we just find the Currents, the the what's it called the, um, the the characters we need to use for the currency, and then we just change it to that, and then that'll automatically adjust the because um, we collect that all the currencies in our JSON, um, so it just automatically adjust it for for whatever currency you put in there. Um, uh, you will, I think, when you where are we? Yeah, when we're printing it out there, we need to change that back to GBP. Um, this should upload a little bit quicker now because it. I think it kind of stores the program in its memory. Um, just see if it's that easy. Right. So press the little button. Okay, it's uploading. So we're on USD now. Connecting, connecting, connecting. There we are, we're connected, so any second it should refresh. Boom, and there we are, back to GBP. Back to the queen, Queen's Pound. Right, so we'll unplug that. And as you can see, even still unplugged, it's still got the, um, the image on there. And now we're going to get our little LiPo battery. Yeah, and we're going to plug it in to VIN. So live wire. There we are. And then we'll see there that that'll then, has it just done it? Oh no, I suppose it's now connected to the Wi-Fi and then there we are, it just refreshed with the price. And now that won't do anything unless we sit and wait here for two hours to watch it refresh again. I've had this running for about, uh, about a week um, and uh, I haven't yet managed to catch it when it's actually refreshing. I had it running every um, every hour, but I, I didn't didn't actually catch it refreshing. But every time I checked, it was just the price was slightly different. Of course, it was going down, you know. Of course, because we're in this, in this mark, aren't we? But there we are. So we, we have to we have to fill our time with these sorts of things while we're in this kind of bear market. So it's a maker market. It's time to make stuff. Uh, on uh, I have got a whole bunch of these boxes which I ordered. Um, I've got the the. I mean, I could print something on the 3D printer if I wanted to, um, but these are pretty neat little project boxes you can buy uh, from Amazon or, or eBay, um, and they're really cheap. These are like, I think they're about 50p a box, um, so you could you could stick it inside one of there, or you could you could make I don't know, make a specific box for it, even just using Lego or something to be able to put that inside of. If you're incredibly careful, I have actually broken e-paper displays in the, the past trying to do this. You can actually. Because uh, the actual e-paper display itself is 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 incredibly thin here, um, and if you get a uh, like a Stanley knife, I don't know what you call them in, in the US, um, uh, an Exacto knife or something. I mean, anyway, um, and you you run it underneath there because this this is glued onto this board here. You can release it, um, uh, which kind of makes it easier sometimes to mounting it onto things, and it would just be attached by this little thing here. I'm not going to do it on this board because I haven't got a. An, a, a Stanley knife uh, handy on me, um, but yeah, you, that 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 is that is possible. That is possible to be able to do. Um, it is actually a little bit easier on these on these WaveShare ones. If you end up getting one of these, going up market and buying one of these WaveShare displays, um, peeling this away from here is 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 a little bit easier. Um, but I mean, maybe 
you know only do that if you if you really if you really need to or, or, or for the application which you're making and then just just really do take your time with it but that's nice nice crisp display nice crisp uh, image on there so there we are so a little tiny today we made this tiny little uh, e-paper uh, ESP32 price Bitcoin price fetcher from um, uh, using uh, the open node API um, and then you can have a little explore and play on open node and, and see what else you can create and, and, and use their service for it's a really very good service um, at some point I will uh, on the github I'll add some uh, an extra function so you can do a request to BTC pay server or um, uh, strike uh, uh, to, to give uh, to give so it's not just um, using the open node service but for now it, it, yeah, it uses open node um, so I, I will I will put that on the github the github details will be in the description um, as well as uh, what else would be there oh the link for open node um, and um, yeah maybe I'll put those Aliexpress um, URLs in there as well so you can see the hardware I've used for this project um, that's it for today. Thank you very much. I uh, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh,